Baseball America recently came out with their rankings of every MLB organization's farm system and the overall quality of their prospects from both the hit side as well as the pitching side. And the Seattle Mariners are one of just two organizations in all of baseball that are currently ranked top five in both hitting prospects and pitching prospects. Seattle is currently ranked fourth overall on the hit side and second overall on the pitching side. The only other organization that is top five in both of these categories is the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers are currently ranked second overall in hitting ability and third overall in pitching. So today we're going to get into both of these articles and break down exactly how they ranked these farm systems and where each team is ranked. But before we do, I have to give a shout out to Baseballism. They are my go-to for all things sports apparel when I'm working out in the gym, when I'm walking around, when I'm at a game, interviewing players pregame, I'm wearing Baseballism products. And since we're heading into the holiday season, if you're hoping to get anything Mariners or baseball related, check out Baseballism.com. They got awesome sweatshirts, t-shirts. They got tons of different hats, whether it be Griffey, Mariner related, Savannah Banana, USA Baseball, you name it. If you use code COUCHGM, it'll help support the brand as well as get you that discount. And with that, let's get into these articles by Baseball America. So first off, we're going to start with the hitting rankings. So their me methodology, as they state, is that in order to calculate an all-encompassing number across a variety of metrics, they used weighted on-base average as a baseline to help build their hit plus score based on weighting specific metrics correlation and influence on future weighted on-base average. The hit plus score measures production on a similar scale to weighted runs created plus with 100 as the average. And then it states that all outputs are weighted based on sample size, depending on the metric, using plate appearances, pitches, or swings to derive each major league organization's aggregate metric. And so below are all of the organizational hitting rankings using this methodology. So based on hit plus, the top hitting system in all of baseball right now is the Detroit Tigers with a hit plus ranking of 115. So overall, they're 15% above league average. You then have the Dodgers, the Twins, the Mariners come in fourth. The Brewers, the Blue Jays, the Guardians, the Oakland A's coming in at 8th with a 109 hit plus. Moving on down, you got the Cardinals, the Yankees, the Cubs, the Giants, the Red Sox, the White Sox, the Phillies. And the Phillies are the 15th team, so that is the top half of the league. Then the bottom half of the league start with the Royals, the Padres, the Marlins, the Diamondbacks, the Orioles, the Rangers, Astros, Pirates, Angels, the Rays, the Rockies, the Braves, the Mets, the Nationals, and then the Reds come in last with a 80 hit plus tool. So they are 20% below league average. And so any number below 100 is below league average. Any number above 100 is doing better than league average. And then the paragraphs below, you can pause and read these if you'd like to go into more details. I'm going to focus on the Mariners, but it talks about why the Tigers are ranked so high, why the Dodgers are ranked where they are. It talks about various trades that all of these teams made at the deadline last year, which accounts for how they acquired or who they traded away for prospects. And so for the Mariners, it states that they also traded some of their higher profile prospects at the trade deadline last year, such as Aiden Smith in that Randy Rosarena deal with the Rays. They also traded away other prospects such as RJ Shrek and Jonathan Class A in that deal with the Blue Jays to bring in Jimmy Garcia. And it states that if the Mariners didn't make those deadline deals, then they would actually have the second highest organizational score, whereas right now for hitting, they are ranked fourth. But the Mariners still have one of the top hitting farm systems in all of baseball. They have the top prospects such as Colt Emerson, who has a one 23 hit plus Cole Young who's at a 121 Michael Arroyo who is at a 117 Harry Ford is at a 115 Johnny Formello a 113 and Felnine Celestine at a 108 and in the paragraph down here it talks about the prospects in Shrek and Class A that the Blue Jays acquired from the Mariners and had they not made all of those trades at the deadline last year selling some of those pieces instead of being ranked six among all farm systems they would drop down seven slots to about 13 overall now getting into some of the metrics that determine the hit plus rankings that they came up with first off is going to be 90th percentile exit velocity so looking at all of the batted balls across farm systems what is the 90th percentile of the exit velocities across the farm the yankees come in first place in this metric with a 102.3 miles per hour then you have the cubs the nationals the phillies the giants the astros the mets angels the twins the tigers the blue Blue Jays, the Pirates, and then you got the Seattle Mariners at 101.4 miles per hour as their 90th percentile exit velocity, which comes in 13th overall. And here is the remaining of the list. The, the league average is 101.2, so the Mariners are a little above league average. And then in the paragraphs down here, it talks about some of the top prospects through the various organizations and how hard they're hitting the ball. The Yankees have some massive power guys such as Spencer Jones, who has a 90th percentile exit velocity above 107 miles per hour. And then after the exit velocity comes the contact rate. 
The leaders for contact rate are the Brewers with a 74.6% contact rate. The Guardians, the Cardinals, the Padres, the Blue Jays, the Red Sox, and down the list. You then have the league average contact rate at a 72, and the Mariners are just below league average in contact rate with a 71.8% contact rate. And as we head down to the paragraphs below here, it also talks about various other prospects and where they're at with contact rate. Again, the Reds were worst in the league with a 69.8% contact rate. And after contact rate comes the chase rate. The teams with the best chase rate are the Dodgers and the Brewers, both with a 24.2% chase rate. Then you got the Yankees, the Padres, the Tigers, the Twins, the Blue Jays, the Orioles, and then the Mariners come in ninth with a 25.5% chase rate. Following them, you got the Giants, the Guardians, the Red Sox, the A's, the Cubs, and the league average chase rate among farm systems is 26.5%. You then have the White Sox, the Royals, the Mets, the Braves, and down the list. And the worst team for chase rate is the Rockies with a 30.2% chase rate. As this states, the Brewers are one of the top hitting farm systems in baseball. They were at the very top in contact rate. They're also at the very top tied with the Dodgers for chase rate. And as Baseball America states, with a lead leading contact rate and chase rate, they seem to be prioritizing drafting or developing the hit tool skill set first and foremost. This also states that the Reds and the Angels are both in the bottom 10 for contact rate and chase rate, lagging the league significantly in hit, in hit tool skills in 2024. And for the Rockies and Cardinals, they're near the bottom of the league for chase rate, yet are top 10 for contact rate, suggesting that putting the ball in play appears to be a priority over making more optimal swing decisions. Then after chase rate, we have barrel rate. And this is where the Mariners really pick it up. When they're swinging and making contact, oftentimes it's going to be the right type of contact. The Mariners are second to only the Yankees in barrel rate among their farm system. The Yankees are barreling up balls at a 14.2% rate. The Seattle Mariners are at 14. Then you have the Dodgers, the Cubs, the Twins, the Giants on down the list. And the league average is a 12.5% barrel rate. The Seattle Mariners are 1.5% above the league average. And as we head down to the description, which summarizes the barrel rates, First off, it states that the Yankees not only lead the league in 90th percentile exit velocity, but also barrel rate, indicating that they hit the ball hard at ideal launch angles to inflict damage. A lot of home runs. The Mariners and Dodgers, although outside the top 10 in 90th percentile exit velocity, are second and third respectively in barrel rate. This suggests they optimize their hardest hit balls at ideal launch angles. Then it states on the other side of the coin, the Nationals and the Mets both have top 10 exit velocities compared to the rest of the league, but are in the bottom third of the league in terms of barrel rate, suggesting that there is room for improving on their raw power. And then it mentions that you have teams like the Rays, the Rangers, Guardians, Padres, and Brewers that are all in the bottom quintile of the league for both 90th percentile exit velocity and barrel rate. This means that these organizations are prioritizing contact rate, just hitting the ball, they're not worried about power, and that's why you have guys like Luisa Rise. You got Stephen Kwan with the Guardians. The Brewers have the highest contact rate and the lowest chase rate. But it also notes that the Rays here are second worst in barrel rate, and they're also bottom 10 for contact rate and chase rate. So all these different factors combined bring in the overall rankings for each metric, which adds up to the total rankings on the left side, which is the hit plus tool. So the Seattle Mariners overall with hit plus rank fourth, and that's because they are 13th in the 90th percentile exit velocity, they are 17th in contact rate, they are 9th in chase percentage, and they are 2nd among farm systems in barrel rate. I had mentioned the Dodgers before as the other franchise being in the top 5 in both hitting and pitching. Their hit plus tool is 2nd overall, they are 15th in 90th percentile exit velocity, 16th in contact rate, 1st in chase rate, and 3rd in barrel rate. And also of note, among AL West teams, the Mariners of course are in 1st out of all of those teams. The Oakland A's rank 8th. We've seen guys come up through their system like Lawrence Butler. They have a lot of other talent that they've been building with their continuous sell-off year after year at the deadline. And then other AL West teams, you have to go down quite a ways. The Texas Rangers rank 21st in hit tool. The Astros are 22nd in hit tool. And then the Angels are 24th. So you got the Rangers, Astros, and Angels at 21, 22, and 24. You got the Oakland A's at 8 overall. And then you got the Seattle Mariners at 4. And I got to learn to stop saying Oakland. I mean, it does say O-A-K for the abbreviation, so they got to change their thing also. But the Mariners are in a good spot overall with their hitting. Now we move over to the pitching rankings. So as Baseball America describes, StatCast data allows us to look beyond performance and subjective analysis of prospective major leaguers. Pitch level data allows us to add context to the difference between two pitches at the same velocity that may generate very different results. 
For example, understanding how a pitch moves to the plate and the traits that impact the ball's flight allow us to more properly assess the quality of that pitch. In turn, this allows us to get a more accurate understanding of how that pitch will translate against major league hitting. And then moving down to their methodology, for each organization, team level metrics such as whiff and chase rate were calculated by aggregating the metrics of each pitcher, weighted by number of pitches thrown by each pitcher in the organization at the end of the 2024 season after the trade deadline to provide an overall assessment of the pitching strength and depth of each organization. Similar to the hitting side, for the pitching side, they've come up with Stuff Plus compared to Hit Plus, which is a blended metric of each pitcher's overall ability. And then the resultant number was then scaled on a weighted runs created plus scale, where 100 again is the league average. And it states that only players between the ages of 17 to 25 years old who threw at least 100 pitches in 2024 were included in this exercise. Any pitcher older than this was removed to minimize the impact of older pitchers on rehab stints or older veterans who make up a great deal of the AAA pitching staffs. This was intended to remove the noise from the non-prospects and isolate with more granularity the team's prospect pool. They also took away all of the players who spent the entirety of their season at the complex level. So overall, the organizations with the best pitching stat cast rankings are the Orioles and the Mariners, who are both technically tied for overall stuff plus at 105.7. You then have the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Mets, the Rays, the Rangers, the Reds, the Blue Jays, Tigers, Yankees, Brewers, Marlins, Rockies, Royals, Angels, Pirates, Astros, Guardians, Phillies, Braves, White Sox, Cubs, Twins, Padres, Giants, Nationals, A's, Diamondbacks, and then Cardinals are last. And to get some clarity, instead of the actual metrics, here are the actual rankings of each organization in each of these categories. So Baltimore is first in both Stuff Plus and Whiff Percentage. Seattle is second in Stuff Plus, but they're 30th in Whiff Percentage. They are missing bats the least out of any team in baseball. I'm interested to see what this article has to say about the reasoning behind that. The Mariners are 17th in called plus swinging strike percentage and 14th in chase percentage. And my assumption for why the Mariners are 30th in whiff percentage is that they're probably living very much in the zone. They're pitching to contact instead of being out of the strike zone. Like the Mariners have the dominate the zone mindset. They want to get ahead with strike one in the strike zone. They want to be pounding the strike zone. And for that reason, I feel like that might be why that they're last in whiff percentage. Then the summary below states that the Mariners and the Dodgers being in the top four should not come as any surprise. The Orioles have the top stuff plus ranking and also elicited the most whiffs in any organization. The Rangers had breakout seasons for many of their pitchers such as Kumar Rocker, Alejandro Rosario, Cole Drake, and Jack Leiter. This is reflected in their top 10 ranking in all of these metrics. The Rays ranked in the top 10 in all elements. The Brewers ranked in the top half in all four of these metrics. Then it states that surprisingly, the Rockies appeared in the top half of all these metrics. Players such as Chase Dolander out of Tennessee, Sean Sullivan, Carson Palmquist, and Wellington Herrera all had excellent 2024 seasons. And the Athletics are in the bottom quintile for Stuff Plus, Whiff Rate, Chase Rate, and Called Plus Swinging Strike Rate. And then here are the top five teams for each of these metrics. As you'll notice, the, the Mariners are not top five in any of these three metrics. So they're not top five in any of these metrics, but then they're second overall in Stuff Plus. That's pretty interesting. This article then gets into the results by specific pitch types. It gets into four-seam fastball, two-seam fastball, and slider. It states that currently the four-seam fastball is the primary pitch in the minor leagues, making up about 40% of the pitches thrown. And these abbreviations that you'll see in the charts below, IVB is induced vertical break, so how much the fastball is fighting gravity. HB is horizontal break, how much it's breaking east to west. VAA is vertical approach angle, the angle at which the pitcher is coming down at release. Then you got release height, which is the number of inches from the ground. You then have the extension, which is the horizontal distance the ball is being released from the pitching rubber, which of course Logan Gilbert is in the 100th percentile in extension year after year. So with just four seam fastballs, the Orioles again are first overall. They have a stuff plus of 106. In all of these organizations, for the most part, their velocity is right within the same grouping. The induced vertical break, the horizontal break is all relatively close. Vertical approach angles are also relatively close. Of course, the release height is going to be close. And all of the extensions are right, right within the same range. Except when you get down here, the Mariners are way down. They have a 99 overall stuff plus on their four-seam fastball. And they're one of just two teams with over a 10 inches of horizontal break. The other team is the Los Angeles Angels. The Mariners have 10.8 inches of horizontal break. 
The Mariners have an average pitch velocity on a four-seam fastball at 92.1, which is in the lower area among all of the, the clubs. It seems that the average for a four-seam fastball is somewhere right around 93. So the Mariners are throwing a bit slower of four-seam fastballs. They have more horizontal break. The vertical break is in the same range, and everything else seems to be about average. And then below is the same table, but instead of the raw number, it is scaled where 100 is the average. And this paragraph states here that because it is not better to throw from a higher release point, scaling it to a stuff plus scale is meaningless, and therefore that column was omitted. It also notes that a vertical approach angle plus of 110 corresponds to a fastball that is flatter than the average fastball by one standard deviation. So to clarify on this bullet point real quick, the vertical approach angle that a pitcher releases the ball at, the higher that the arm slot is, the more vertical of an approach angle that it is, the flatter the forcing fastball will be, the more over the top that they're getting, so the more efficient the spin rate will be. To where it's going to be a straight forcing fastball, it's going to be more flat than if they're coming from the side. If they're releasing from more of a horizontal angle, when they rip the forcing fastball down, it's going to have a type of side spin to it, which might mean that the ball will have more drop or horizontal break. Versus if they were to be releasing more over the top where it's more of a straight fastball and like it mentions, it's going to be flatter. So here's the chart below. And as we mentioned with the Mariners, their velocity plus is at an 81. It's tied for the lowest with the Giants. And as we also mentioned, their horizontal break is the top in baseball. Their horizontal break plus is a 126. So their four-seam fastball is breaking horizontally 26% more than the average four-seam fastball throughout the minor leagues. And what's also interesting is that their vertical approach angle is just a 92, so it's not like super low. They're not coming necessarily like from a horizontal release point, but they're still getting a lot of horizontal break on their four-seams. Versus the Oakland A's, they have the lowest vertical approach angle. And yet their horizontal break is below average on the four seam fastball. And then below is the same table, except this is just the overall rankings for each of these categories. As we described, Mariners are 29th in velocity. They're first in horizontal break. They're also last in extension and whiff percentage on the four seam fastball. So summarizing all of this data, what does this mean? The Orioles have the best collection of four seam fastballs ranking in the top five for all three results metrics and in the top half for all of the parameters, including the highest rank stuff plus. The Mariners pitcher pool threw the fewest pitches that were classified as four-seam fastballs. Interestingly, they showed the most horizontal break, the slowest velocity, and the shortest extension for all four-seams. The Rays and the Guardians threw the most four-seam fastballs among the organizations, with Guardians fastballs having the biggest extension and the largest increase in perceived velocity. The further of an extension you have, the larger the increase in perceived velocity because you're releasing the ball closer to home plate. Last year, the Blue Jays had the flattest four-seam fastballs per vertical approach angle, and in 2024, they again lead with the Guardians a close second. And it states that, interestingly, the Dodgers collectively had the highest velocity, two full standard deviations higher, and nearly one mile per hour faster than the next closest organization, who is the Tigers, while also having the lowest called plus swinging strike rate and the third lowest chase rate. This perhaps suggests that they are prioritizing the raw metrics of the pitcher rather than the game results of the execution. Next up, we have the sliders, which is the second most thrown pitch and arguably the most important pitch in the modern game, making up about 24% of the pitches thrown. Again, the forcing fastball was at 40%. Note that because the release height and extension of a pitcher's slider is essentially the same as the release height and extension of the forcing fastball, those columns were omitted. So now coming down to the table, again, it's the Orioles that had the best slider in all of the minor leagues with a stuff plus of 119. The Mariners didn't do too hot in the forcing fastball metrics, but they do great in the slider metrics. They are at a 116 stuff plus. And something I'm noticing right off the bat with the Mariners sliders is that they have a very low induced vertical break, just 0.3 inches. They also have a large horizontal break with an average of 9.8 inches. Then here's the metrics for the rest of the teams. And below, instead of the raw number, it's scaled where 100 is average. And you can see here that with the horizontal break, the Mariners are 26% above the average farm system as far as horizontal break with the slider. Matt Brash must be walking around teaching the Mariners minor leaguers how to throw a slider. They have a velocity plus of 79 and then the large horizontal break. So largely they're focusing on sweepers instead of harder type of sliders. And as you can also see here, the Dodgers led in forcing fastball velocity, and they're also leading in slider velocity. They're 25% above the league average. And this is the same table for sliders, except via rankings. Again, the Mariners are third overall with the slider. They are first in horizontal break, and they are last among all organizations in velocity with their slider. 
Now heading down to summarize all of the, the metrics here. As this states from the results point of view, the Tigers arguably have the best sliders. They elicit the most whiffs, the second most chases, and results in the second most strikes. The Orioles have the highest stuff plus on sliders from the model despite being the near slowest velocity. The Mariners, just like we saw with the most arm side horizontal break amongst four seam fastballs, also have the most glove side horizontal break on their sliders, suggesting an emphasis on east to west movement in their draft targets and pitching development. So instead of a vertical focus, the Mariners are focusing on a east to west movement. The Blue Jays are second in vertical approach angle and induced vertical break suggesting that they deprioritize vertical plane break. The Red Sox and Rays are both in the top three for vertical approach angle and induced vertical break, but also in the bottom four in terms of horizontal break, suggesting they go one further and focus on minimizing two plane break. And this finishes out by saying that the Yankees threw the most sliders of any organization, the Mariners and the Blue Jays threw the second and third most sliders. The last pitch type that this article goes through is the two-seam fastball. The third most thrown pitch from the examined minor league pitching pool was the two-seam fastball, which takes up 12% of the pitches thrown, which is half the frequency of the sliders. Here again are the results. The Mariners are second overall in stuff plus with the two-seam fastball. And you can see here that the velocity with the Mariners two-seam is much closer to the league average than with the four-seam and the slider where they came in, you know, 29th and 30th overall. And again, the Mariners have the top horizontal break, this time with the two-seam. The Mariners are just below league average on velocity with the two-seam. They are 27% above the league average with horizontal break. And they're right at average with whiff plus and right above average with called plus swinging strike rate. So again, here's that same table except with rankings. As described, they're a little below league average with velocity. They are first again in horizontal break. They're seventh in vertical approach angle, 11th in whiff rate on the two seam, and ninth in called plus swinging strike rate with the two seam. And then it summarizes, as we saw with their four seam fastballs and sliders, the Mariners lead all organizations in horizontal break, further reinforcing an emphasis on east-west movement. Seattle also threw the most two seam fastballs while the fewest four seam fastballs, suggesting a migration away from the traditional most thrown pitch in baseball. The Rays throw the hardest two seamers with the Marlins close behind. Miami's pitchers, however, manage to get the ninth most horizontal break, while the Rays rank in the bottom third of the league in horizontal movement. As you might imagine, the higher velocity you throw a pitch at, the less time it has to break overall. And then just like with their four seam fastballs, which were the first and third flattest among organizations, the Blue Jays and the Guardians interestingly have the two flattest collection of two seam fastballs in the league. This suggests that they may not emphasize distinction between the, the two main types of fastballs. So overall, a couple very interesting articles talking about the farm systems, both for hitting and for pitching, and why certain teams are ranking in certain spots. And you can see where certain organizations are focusing their development on compared to others. And very promising that the Mariners are top five, both in hitting farm system rankings, as well as pitching farm system rankings. It's also promising to see that the Mariners up and coming prospects throughout the system have one of the best barrel rates in all of baseball, the ideal type of contact and launch angle, as well as with the Mariners on the pitching side of things, they've definitely focused with their development on moving east to west on that horizontal break, not really worrying about the velocity. They're also not the highest in whiff rate or chase rate, but they're focusing on dominating the zone, getting batters out as quick as possible. And in general, the more that a ball is moving overall from the time it is released to the time it crosses home plate, whether it be a slider or a two seam, the harder it will be for a hitter to barrel a ball and instead they might make soft contact grounding out instead of hitting it over the wall if you have a high velocity with a flat four seam pass ball. So what are your thoughts on this information that was provided by Baseball America? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM to stay up to date on all things Seattle Mariners and baseball throughout the offseason and we'll see you in the next one.